Hello everybody, how are you? This is Andrea and in today's video we will continue with the Zodiac Chibi series. October is the month of Libra and I was so looking forward to this sign because I had a very specific idea of how I wanted the Chibi to look like. Because Libra is all about balance and harmony between opposites, I decided to use that as my main inspiration. But before I go into details, let me quickly go over the tools and programs that I will be using. To draw I use a Wacom Cintiq Companion 2, which is a tablet and computer all in one. In terms of software, today I will be using Photoshop for the basic sketch, and then after that is done, I will continue and complete the illustration in Adobe Illustrator to turn it into vector. In case you were wondering, I do not use any custom brushes or presets. All the tools are defaults offered by the programs on their own. Alright, let's talk some more about Libra. As you can see, I gave her lots of hair, and that is because I wanted them to stand out, because I plan to give her split-colored hair to go with her theme. I was initially going to give her white and purple hair, but then I felt like she looked too similar to Sakimi-chan's OC, so then I decided to switch the colors to pink and purple, which I thought was also a nice combo. I am trying to be mindful about having a balanced color palette in my Zodiac series. I want it so that when I am done with all the signs and I put all of the characters together, the colors work well and there is no weird clashing. Another thing that I've done to symbolize this sign was adding the sun and moon elements. I didn't want her to hold a scale, so I thought that she could just hold the moon and sun in her own hands. Alright, now that I went over the introductions and my ideas, we can start with the Q&A where I answer questions that you've left me on Instagram. I hope that you're not sick of this part yet. I like it because I feel like we're starting a conversation, Plus, you get to know me a little bit better, and I might be able to help you out if you have some more technical questions. Alright, question number one. Which website do you use to buy BJDs? How is it possible to choose a BJD when you look at the pictures and it is with a face-up, wig and clothes on? Okay, so to make things easier for anyone watching my videos, I always leave links to the stores where I got my dolls from in the description box. So for example, if a video shows my Unoa, the link in the description will take you to the official website that sells Unoas. Then also at the end of each year, I do my doll collection video, which goes through every single doll that I have. I include full details like the brand and the type, and then I also leave the links to the stores in the description box. To answer your second question, I totally understand your concern. It is difficult to get a clear idea of the doll's face sculpt and body when it is covered in makeup, wigs and clothes. This is why it is super important to do research and find owner's photos because they will give you a great idea of what the doll looks like in detail. Flickr is a great platform to find that information, as well as Den of Angels, because as soon as a new BJD is announced, there are threads popping up all over the place with people discussing the new doll. In many cases, doll companies release photos of the doll's faces unpainted and have full body photos where you can see the joints, but sometimes owner's photos are still more useful because the owner can add more info and feedback about it, be it any issues with the joints, resin quality, comparison with other bodies and brands, and so on. 
So yeah, just ensure that you spend enough time doing research so that you avoid any disappointment. But even if you buy a doll that you don't end up liking, you can always resell it. The good thing about this hobby is that as long as you take care of your dolls, they don't really lose in value. And sometimes they even gain in value. I hope this helped, good luck picking your own doll. Next question, why did you start doing up dolls? I think that the main thing that attracted me to this hobby is how it gives me so many different ways to express my creativity. I like how I can use my drawing skills to paint a face up and I use traditional medium for that. Then at the same time it feels like I am doing someone's makeup and I've always been interested in makeup. Then I also love colorful hair, so I can make wigs of all the different hairstyles that I like. Then I also like fashion, so dressing up my dolls is really fun because they always look great in anything. And then when they are customized I am able to do photo shoots with them and experiment with my camera and lights. And then last but not least I make videos of all those stages. So in that case I use my digital skills to create videos to share with everybody. This year I started experimenting making doll shoes and eventually I want to start making my own doll clothes as well. As you can see there is so much you can do in this hobby and it is this aspect that makes it so much fun for me. You can take it as far as you want and make it as challenging as you wish. But at the same time, if you want to take it easy, you can do that too, because there is so many artists out there offering their skills, be it making doll clothes and wigs and offering face-up commissions. So if you don't feel comfortable doing all of those things yourself, you can just commission people. Question number three. How old were you when you first started repainting dolls? I think I was either 21 or 22. I officially repainted a face-up from scratch a year after I got my first BJD. What reference photos do you use when drawing both traditionally and digitally? That really depends on the illustration itself. But for example, when I was repainting Bebe Maru and I was drawing all of the floral elements, I had a variety of references. I had pictures of floral lace, I had Mandela designs, I heavily relied on books about plants, I even watched a series about making patterns out of simple shapes and then I went out and took photos of local plants to incorporate those as well. So the same goes with any other illustration that I do. I really try to have a variety of references, but what I like the most is using old books or taking my own photos. Question number five, have you ever made any of the actual dolls? Nope, I haven't. I am mostly a doll collector and customizer. I was never a doll maker. Also because I work at a toy company, my contract does not allow me to make any of my own dolls. So even if I wanted to, I would not be able. But to be honest, I am not that interested in doll making yet. I want to learn other skills first, like sewing my own doll clothes. Question number 6. What is your favorite color? It is still teal and pink. That color combo makes me so happy. Next question. Have you ever thought about oil painting or have you done it before? I considered giving it a go, but I honestly have so many amazing art supplies already that I feel like I haven't used enough. So I am trying not to buy any other paints and just use the materials that I already have. I really want to take advantage and create some cool stuff with what I've already got. 
but eventually I would love to give oil painting a go because it looks like a very fun and interesting medium. Alright, this is all the time we have for the Q&A today. I hope that you've enjoyed it and thanks to everybody who left questions on my Instagram. Here is our finished Libra Chibi. I really hope that you like her. Oh, and I forgot to say happy birthday to all of you celebrating this month. At this exact point in time when I'm making this video, I haven't launched my Etsy store yet, but I do plan to sell charms and stickers of this design. If by the time this video is out I have things up on my store, I will leave all the links and info in my description box. If not, then thank you for being so patient. I am trying really really hard to get things all up and running as soon as possible. The next sign I will be working on is Scorpio, so if you have any suggestions or ideas, leave them in the comment section so I can see them. By the way, did you realize that we are already halfway through the Zodiac project? Time flies really quickly and I hope that you've been liking this journey so far. Well, this is all I have for today. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, comment and share. Thank you so much for watching, take care and I'll talk to you again next week. Bye!